Welcome to another episode of 200,000 Times Closer. We are investigating our favorite uh, category today. With an up-close look, we will see what makes these items so special to our hearts. But first, I am interested in taking a look at my egg sandwich. And uh, there we have it. Eggs for days. Mmm, that looks tasty. So let's dive into this egg sandwich. If we may. Who's bad? I am bad. <laughs> we are taking a look at our egg sandwich. Here we go. So I'm going to dive in here with the thousand times microscope. You can see it's not that crazy. That's the egg white. Egg white. Just zoom through a little bit. I want to get all the way in there. All the way in there. All the way in there. Nothing crazy is happening. Oh, there we have it. I saw it. Bring it out. Bring it out. All right, there you have egg sandwich. Now there is egg, pepper, cheese, hot sauce. There's the bread. Oh, the bread is quite interesting. The outside of the bread, which is toasted. Oh, wow, not exactly what I expected. Not even in the slightest. We're going to go all the way in all the way in. That's the bread there. And I don't know about you, but I'm getting quite hungry. It looks tasty all the way up close, which is good. So, pardon me while I have my breakfast. Now I can assure you, most food does not look that tasty up close. That is quite a relief. Mm. I looked at a cheesesteak and it was much like my face. The video game world. We will take a close, close look upon these items such as controllers, games, and these consoles and why is everything going off at one time. We are excited as ever to take on a journey such as this, so why don't we get right to it? First, a capacitor conditions DC voltage to other components, e.g. the video card, hard drive, sound card, etc., to provide a steady stream of power. Now what we have here are discs of the PlayStation variety. I've got the discs of the PlayStation 2 and a discs of the PlayStation 4. We're skipping the 3, of course, because I never owned one of those as the Xbox 360 was sufficient for that time period of my life. So the PlayStation 2, uh, which you can see here, I have Enter the Matrix. We're going to take a look closely at the disc itself. I'm curious to see on the front the printing, quality of printing. Uh, we have here greens, blacks, white, and red. Of course the white being an absence of color. I want to see here closer what happens when we enter the matrix. We're entering the matrix, we're entering, ah, oh, there we are. So that is the quality of printing on the PlayStation 2 matrix game front. So, I'll turn the disc over here, take a better look. This is of course the shiny segment of the disc at 40 times zoom capacity. I will bring it in here on the disc itself. So that's 40 times. I don't see anything dramatic and I don't know what a laser could pick up there. And here we have 1000 times. All right, if I get my magnifying glass in my glasses, I have 200,000 times. You're not capable of doing it because you were not prepared and you don't have the tools. I still don't see anything that a laser could pick up it's all just very confusing how this works for me. If I remove my glasses and I turn off the light here, I'm going to be getting the laser. The laser. And I will be shining it on the disc to create 
what would be the affected area. So that's what it looks like, eh? This is the texture of the disc with a laser shine through, shown through. Uh, I see dust, of course. But other than that, it's indiscernible how the disc picks up information. To me, I'm not an expert of this sort of thing, just a curious guy. Now I have here a new game. So I have Bloodborne here on PlayStation 4. I'm coming in to see what the game print looks like on the front uh, to see how far we've come in printing technology. I'll go up here to his shoulder. Much the same. Not, uh, not a whole lot has changed, I would say. Of course, being very dark, this is the Sony emblem. Uh, so I see there the printing of things maybe has not been put at the forefront of technological uh, it, it gets the job done so what's the point I have a magnifying glass uh, but it hasn't changed much in the last ten years or so I want to take a look here uh, just offhand the bottom of the disc looks a touch bluer than the other the PlayStation 2 disc was totally silver but this one as you can see has a hint of blue to it uh, so that is the only main difference that I can see. Maybe side by side it would be better to, to show you. The PlayStation 4 disc is a touch bluer. This even has a yellow uh, feel to it. So coming in here, we're going to find the same PlayStation area here. The PlayStation area. Okay, so that is the center of the disc. And moving out... nothing nothing so far we're going all the way in a thousand times bringing it back out nothing I'm not seeing anything which uh, we didn't really see anything for PlayStation 2 either so I'll turn the light off and we'll do our infrared scan get an idea of there we are the difference here look at that the texture again it may have changed a bit but I don't see yeah I, if anything it looks like finer quality you know and you have to keep in mind that the laser I'm using it has uh, its own fractalation the fractalization may play into the texture that we're seeing so it's not 100 percent for me I hope not for you what the laser is picking up on and turning into readable information such as graphics, motion controls. That's why you have the downloadability as well. So you could always have the game disc which has a majority of the information attached to cloud information which is unlocked and you download that information so the disc doesn't have to have everything in this. That is the main difference. When I looked with my glasses I could see that clearly I said you know what I can see here that most of the information is now downloadable and this game is more of a key to that information uh, I had to turn my lights on uh, but once I did that it was clear to me that that was going on so I do have as well I promised you a cartridge so what I have my DS I'll show you here it's my Charizard case I use that it was signed by Matthew Lillard uh, that's as good as it gets, I apologize. The Matthew Lillard signature has faded in the past. I just wrote over it because it was a fond time and a funny moment. I wouldn't, just bringing that up, I feel I should get a close up on it. So we'll go all the way out. Here we have the Sharpie. That is the L section here, an L cross section. Okay, and that's because I've gone over it now several times probably. This is the faded section of the M. Um, but it's just he signed in a place where I would hold to play all the time and I wasn't going to, you know, get too crazy about it. So this is the M. Uh, you can see I've gone over it a few times with the Sharpie. 
and goes over into the L. There's many layers here, you can see up close. The other end of the L, and lastly the D, which I seem to have touched the least. Alright, and that is probably where it was originally, but now it is here. So, interestingly enough, we're looking at the cartridge here. And the cartridge, you have to keep in mind, probably has its own chipsets, alright, and its own read only memory, because most of the game information, this isn't, although uh, I have uh, Super Smash Brothers here. Can we see that? Yes. Okay, we have Link. Smash. Super. Smash Brothers. Uh, you can see that the printing on that matches much of the other games. Not very crystal clear, but you can see the pixelation coming even closer. Enhance. Enhance. There we have it. So it's quite pixelated. Many different spots of ink go into making these images. At any rate, so they have the read-only memory on these discs. Not much unlike a Game Boy from the days of yore, you know, but uh, the technology's gotten better where the elements, you can see here, this is the, the uh, main element is exposed. The contact Okay, and the mysterious green plastic that makes up motherboards. Nobody knows what it really is. It's just everywhere. Um, I would imagine that's gold. If you think about it, that's pretty fancy. You know, gold isn't a great bit of our items, but it may uh, be overlooked nowadays. And with that as well, we have here a PlayStation 2 memory card. Uh, the PlayStation 2 memory card has print on it. We'll check out the print. It's more of a paint, uh, you can see. Now this is like literally painted on there with some kind of uh, fancy dancy. I don't know if it's oil paint or if it's certainly not acrylic. It would be definitely oil based. Let's just say. Because the game, the plastic itself is oil based. You can see that and the shimmer, the shine of it. Uh, the cartridge itself up close, let's get very close, has a lot of texture to it at a thousand times and we'll go just into the hidey hole. Much less of the gold in here for the contacts than on the Smash Brothers game but if you imagine the avenues you while you're playing a game you would need those contacts uh, more variation while playing a game than saving a game. Alright, so these are the only contacts there for saving that that information, read-only information, I imagine, not random access memory, because for a memory card, while the system is turned off, that is the memory you're saving. That's the main difference. If the system's turned off, you don't have access to random access memory. You only have uh, read-only memory. We've handled the games Let's handle the control. PlayStation 2 controller here. We have up close the plastic and the paint much the same as the uh, memory card. A little bit different in texture, but overall very much the same for the general makeup of it. I want to get in nice and close here, all the way in, and get an idea what it looks like. Heavily textured, of course. This is got a bit of skin in there you can see that's the most interesting part the science part many years of skin and dust in those deep crevices uh, blood sweat and tears if you would okay so we're going in on the thumb pad now this is much different as far as the overall feel and I imagine the uh, up close texture as well. So at a glance the rubber is very tame. You can see there that is rubber um, and I looked at a rubber band as well. It's quite similar to that. Now even when you get up close it doesn't get much clearer and that's the one thing about rubber when you get very 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 close it doesn't get much different. Okay so that's as good as it's going to get there. 
I'm wondering here about the uh, directional pad. So we'll get in there on one of the buttons. In the crevice, I don't see much going on. The texture of the... This is plastic now, but it's textured plastic. Okay, we'll get all the way in on that. Wow, okay. And this looks very similar to my phone case. So the case that they put on your phone, because it's tactile and they don't want you to drop it, you also want good control on the buttons, so they put that texture in there. Uh, or they manufacture it in a way where there is texture to maintain control. Alright, here we have the triangle button. Very smooth. Clean paint lines. Actually rather impressive. In the crease, nothing much going there. To the circle button, much the same. Clean lines. We'll go around the outside there. So I don't imagine it would be much different. This is the play button, or the pause button if you would. The start button. And we'll just do the wire as well. This is something that is actually invisible on the PlayStation 4 controller, the uh, the wire. But here you can see, rubberized, it's got some kind of stuff on it. Who knows what happened to this over the years, but it does have a bit of coloration. You know what it is, too, that I maintain my PlayStation right near my paints, my paint station, so it could just be from that. Um, so I got a little paint on there as well. Well, I've got my finger, I'm going to get a close-up of my fingerprint. Don't steal my identity. There we go. Very cool, huh? That's what a fingerprint looks like. What is that? What are you? Look at that. Sweaty fingerprint. I'm getting in very, very, very close and coming out. Coming out slow. You see that? Sweaty fingerprint? Interesting stuff. We're going to have to do an episode where you get bath fingers and we'll do bath fingers and see what they look like in a microscope. There's another one. Living, breathing organism, this fingerprint. With I can't even see that blue fuzzy uh, with my regular eyes. It goes to show the value of our show. On to the PlayStation 4 controller here. Now, as I told you, the cord has become invisible. <laughs> it's not necessary. So, coming in here on the touchpad. This is new technology that separates the PlayStation 4 from the PlayStation 2. Is This is a touch sensitive pad. And you can see the texture separated by the generic smooth dots. Perhaps that plays a role in knowing where you're touching and sensory recognition. Okay, and bring it out slightly. The texture, the smoothness, some scratches. Now we're coming down here to the PlayStation button. Quite smooth, quite smooth. Ooh, some skin, some skin and fuzz under there. Now this looks like it was pressed in there. Was that painted or pressed? We'll get in close and find out. It seems to be plastic yeah those are two different colored plastics which is fascinating to me okay so the buttons as well I wonder if they did the same method this is the square button no way again two different color plastics and I'll tell you how I can tell it's right there See that shiny line there? Or in here, better at the corner. So right there you can see, it's the same material.
just different colors. So over to the directional pad, we'll see here, you remember the other one was heavily textured, I compared it to my phone case. Over here, we have not so textured. I can tell with my regular eyes, my human eyes, it's a little bit textured but not severely like the old PlayStation 2 controller. Now you get up very close and you can see. Now on the joystick, Again, the rubber doesn't have a lot of texture to it. It's smoothed out significantly where it's touched all of the time, you can see. And when you get up close, it shouldn't change much. The rubber is, uh, yeah, you'll see. The back, though. The back is textured, unlike the PlayStation 2. So I will get up on the back side of the PlayStation 4 controller, and you'll see exactly what I mean. Look at that. It's like an organized print. An organized print here of plastic. Very fascinating stuff. I do wish to jump in now to the Xbox 360 console. You can see here, up close, well maybe you can't see that well because it's not going to help me help you, but we're going to point out some of these components here and this tray here that comes out and we'll take a look underneath. We'll do that right away actually because I've already removed the cords. So you can see here, just at large, we have the heat sink and the fan assembly here. This is all cooling. All of the cooling is, well, I would say one of the most important factors, one, not one of the most uh, useful in terms of creating a gameplay, but it is the most important because all of the damage comes from heat. So the heat sink has, much like a air conditioner, these blades that allow air to flow between and the heat pulls out towards the outside and the air is then taking away that heat and the fans are doing the same. Uh, so you don't have any kind of digestion or burning of any of these circuit items. So we'll be taking a look here at the assembly of the Xbox. We've removed the disc tray, all right. We have the processors here. This is called North Bridge, and this is called South Bridge. I'll get into that. And we have this fan assembly. Uh, this is to contain that area we are removing. So to keep you updated, this is where the fan assembly was. The fans are here. We shall get into this with our secondary camera as you can see. So, as I was saying, North Bridge and South Bridge. This is the computing area. This is why you pay the money you do for game systems like the Xbox 360. Uh, the North Bridge is in charge of most of the computing power, whether it's rendering the, every tiny leaf, remembering where you left that book in Skyrim when you threw it precariously in the woods, uh, what you did to Martha over in Glen Ridge, um, that's random access memory. The chaotic memory of the computing world happens here. This is, I left the heat sink on so you can see that's how I identified Northbridge because it's chaotic power. It's uh, fully processing 100% of the time. You can see how many phases of power it has uh, because of these chokes. The chokes identify how many phases. I've got here two chokes. It means two phases of power. On the other side, I have two chokes, which represents two phases of power. I'm not a computer guy. I'm a curious guy. So I can only assume that all of these are for the North Bridge, meaning it has four phases at any given time. And I'll take a moment and explain the phases for you. Uh, what you have here is a straight line across. A straight line, you have one phase of power, it goes up and down and up and down like this. Well you add a second phase of power and it hits here and it comes down and it hits here and it comes down and it hits here and you start filling it out. So we're filling out the phases of power meaning that we have constant power. That's a terrible idea. But you see then, this is the power capacity at any given time. If one of these fails, you have consistent power uh, to that processing chipset. 
it's pretty interesting, right? So I like to leave it on there because A, it's taking it off and that's a lot of work. Uh, four screws, I'm quite lazy, but this is the heat sink. The air between is where you're releasing heat that's generated by that processor. Now I'll put a picture up, I'll put a picture up here of uh, what these sockets look like, the processor socket looks like without the heat sink. But for now, we have here capacitors. I have transistors. These transistors, what they are, it's a semiconductor. It's used so you can have very low voltage, low power running through the circuit board. Once it hits the transistor to accomplish a task, it's amplified and switched on. At that point, you have lower heat throughout that you have to maintain because heat is the worst thing for computers. Uh, although this is a fun gaming system, it's still a computer and heat will shut down the system. So that's why we have uh, high temperature relays and fans. Cooling is a large part of the uh, gaming and computing world. Releasing all of the heat that's generated from the friction of electricity and, and current. Uh, here we have another chipset. This one says Xbox on it as you can see. So take a moment to check that out there you can see it says Xbox on it that chipset I can only imagine has something to do with the um, general Xbox ROM or read only memory okay read only memory read only memory is uh, such like a CD-ROM where it's written on there it's unchanging and in that case you just have to pull it out of a file so to speak so it's already in um, you're going to have these chipsets this is a processor here it's not a high grade processor so I imagine that's for the screen the interaction with your Xbox so that's not what you're paying big money for but that is their logo I imagine that's the processor for when you sign in and see all of the games that you can play and your friends chat and all of that this would contain the uh, functionality of that software uh, and for that you also have capacitors uh, resistors look at all these cute little resistors in here I imagine they are resistors I'm not a computer guy I'm a curious guy but they say R2D2 Ooh, R2D2's in there I imagine they're resistors because when you look at the tiny lines uh, you can just imagine that's to protect this chipset here which I believe is a ROM read-only memory and that brings us to Southbridge Southbridge is that processing socket okay again with the heat sink any heat that's generated is put into the fins and released through air and with the fan assembly but this is in charge of accessing read-only memory. So that's uh, general map. That's, uh, you know, how characters look, unchanging characters look. They're just pulling from read-only memory. It's not chaotic. It's not changing. All of these things are as promised at any given time. So read-only memory is slower and less, I would say, um, demanding and therefore you have a smaller heat sink as well but then you get the cityscape of course you get to see all of that which is quite interesting so it tells the story in that sense of course the donuts the cores are the phases so you have these phases of power here with the capacitance and uh, capacitors and, and transformers look a lot alike it's tough to tell them apart but we're gonna get in there and show you uh, here why that is so we have again these coils here this coil here. Uh, I don't know that I would call that a choke, uh, which would be the same as this here, but these coils wrapped around that core, that creates inductance. Uh, the more coils, the more wraps around, the higher the inductance. And I'm not sure, I, I've done a lot of research, I'm not a computer guy, I can't figure it out. Uh, more transistors over here, the switches that amplify power. Here we have the USB assembly. This is where you plug in your devices. Uh, so we do have another phase of power over here uh, in this uh, choke. Now, I'm not 
quite certain what these are. Perhaps they are uh, the random access memory. I'm sorry, not random access memory. Uh, perhaps they are read-only memory. All right, so I do want to bring you to the front here. This is that classic button that we've seen with the red ring of death or uh, the green if it's working properly. And that also has its own read-only memory chipset here. Uh, we'll get close in on that. It's not doing us well now, but we'll get closer in a moment. Uh, but this is where you have your LEDs, and uh, it has its own circuit board as well. And that's from the front, the USBs there. Hmm. So we'll go in for a closer look. Let's take a moment and put our glasses on so we can get 200,000 times closer to the Xbox 360. And here we have it. Alright, so we're back here. This is a tiny resistor, if I'm not mistaken. One of those tiny little baby resistors. Uh, we're going to go back towards the power, the main power not sure what you are it has a symbol let's see that is the symbol for a diode so this item is a diode uh, if you'd like to know what a diode is a diode is two terminal electronic components that conduct current primarily in one direction it has a low resistance in the other direction high resistance Okay, low resistance in one direction and high resistance in the other direction. So it is a resistor, but it's a diode. So it's kind of like a flow control as well. You see that? So, we have a few of these components. I can only imagine that all of these are diodes to protect and control power as needed. And here what I have is the capacitor. Or perhaps a transformer. Let me see. So it has this symbol on top. It looks like a K. That's basically the diode symbol, isn't it? I mean, without the arrow through it. Uh, but to me, it's a K. Now, are there any other clues to what this may be? We do have... There's the coil in the background. You see the coil? Interesting. Okay. But this is that item. Oh, I see a giveaway here. The dead giveaway. Is that symbol right there? This is a capacitor. And that's a Farad or Faraday symbol. Where are you, Faraday symbol? That, the UF. The UF symbol. And that means capacitance. Another sort of chipset. Let's spin this around, see what we have. Anything that's giving it away for what it is. Ah, oh, is that a transistor? I believe that's a transistor, and the only reason it kind of has the two inputs here, it seems to be more of the switch style, <clears throat> which means that it's getting base power, and when the base power connects with, let's call it negative power, it amplifies inside using semiconductors, by amplifying the power when needed uh, reduces the overall heat of the the system and that's how we can make things smaller more efficient and increase the lifespan uh, also like phases by having more phases you're increasing the lifespan because it's lessening the work more hands make light work here we have another diode I always wonder about the letter codes, if this is a resistor, a transistor, or I don't know what I'm talking about. It doesn't take much to make me sound stupid, because I'm not a computer guy, I'm just a curious guy.
This is TXC G27. Now, I don't know what that is. You can see the general shape. It's like a little Twinkie. Are there any clues? It could be a resistor. It could be... some kind of memory bank. I want to get way back here. This is where audiovisual is uh, released, the output I should say. So after all of the computing you have a signal for the audio and visual that is put into the HDMI cable and sent to your television. And that is all back here. Now that's a resistor right there. These are diodes or resistors in their own way. Uh, just channeling the signal, regulating the signal. These, that's a new symbol. What is that? Let's see if this gives it away. Resistors, maybe it's just an interesting style. And we have this item here. What are you? What are you, sir? Uh, that's quite a large resistor if R means resistor because that's just where we're at it's going off of the clues can't imagine every R means resistor though keep in mind this is uh, an entire entity and you could spend your entire life devoted to learning its nuance uh, and some people do but I have not. So if you see anything wrong with my section, please let me know in the comments and correct me so I will be well educated. Now before we go anywhere else, I do want to take a look at, this is the laser here. Okay, you see the laser has a bit of a dome head on it. This lens. And I also just want to point out that it moves uh, quite easily here. I'll zoom all the way out. And it's on this spring assembly, like, see these connections there, loosely supporting the lens. And it bounces in there quite easily. Now that's where the laser is produced. I would feel remiss if I didn't give you a little example. I'm using an external laser and I'm lasering the laser with a laser. Oh look, that's the laser working. That's what it would look like if that were the laser working. I know, it sounds silly. Here we have a coil there too. The coil is probably to regulate power in a way for the laser. We have another one here. There's the outlet. Oh, we have a fourth. I'm guessing, yep, we have a fourth. Alright, so there's four coils for this laser. Now this mechanical assembly, this is where, whether you're opening or closing incorrectly and not by pushing the button, uh, or just because there's so much movement, mechanical movement, this is the part that stopped working first and foremost for me. This is the disc tray. These tracks at some point started getting jammed up so the tray started coming out and uh, stopping and jumping and, and pushing in, pushing out, in and out because it's on a screw mechanism. Alright, it's hard to see. That screw mechanism in there was the bane of my existence. So it jumps off the track or something, something's going on, uh, but it wouldn't open and close properly, it wouldn't recognize that it was uh, correctly closed, and it would open, or it wouldn't re recognize there's a disc in there. It went a little chaotic on me, and the disc, it wouldn't even start to spin. So this is why we were able to open this up. I am going to continue to try and repair it, of course, but this was the bane of my existence, and I am going to be replacing just this and moving forward. 
Thank you guys for joining another episode of 200,000 Times Closer. It was quite interesting to get into the console, the controllers, and the games with you today. Next time we'll be getting quite weird with it and investigating human skin, nails, eyeballs, teeth, tongue, the nuance of the human body, and we shall see then uh, what we're made of and how disgusting we can be up close. And for now we depart, but as always, my best to you. Thank you for joining another episode of the 200,000 Times Closer. And that concludes another episode.